us to forget about our daughter, their sister, our loved one. They they thought they was gonna just throw her away like she was garbage. We want to know why our sister was treated like a Jane Doe. Nobody notified us. Hey guys, welcome back to the Milk Carton Series. I'm your host, Stephanie, if you are new. And as always, we thank you guys for tuning in. Now, today's story, guys, you probably read from social media, you know, your engine search on Yahoo, Google, wherever you go to get your news, right? So today's story does focus on 23-year-old Lauren Smith Fields. But the crazy thing about her case is there was another woman who died in the same community the same day. And these two cases, in a sense, kind of correlate, as you will find out. So the next case is 53-year-old Brenda Rawls. Now, what's so saddening about these two cases is law enforcement in the Bridgeport, Connecticut area literally gave these families their ass to kiss. Like, they literally had no type of care whatsoever when it pertained to these two women dying. And it sucks because, you know, we want to say all day long, it's not about race. It's not about this. But for a moment, take yourself outside of your body and put yourself into the shoes of these families and how it feels to not have someone really care or give a damn about your child, your family member or whoever this, you know, those individuals could be to you. And literally it's like, treat you're treating these people's family as if they are scum on the street so as i said previously both women died on december 12th of 2021 and law enforcement literally did not investigate properly when it came to these two cases now lauren she went on a blind date from the app bubble she met 37 year old matthew lafontaine and Brenda went to an unknown male's house and died. Both of these women died. And now you're probably wondering, well, how do they correlate? Well, like I said, law enforcement from the same community did not give these families the proper dignity. They had no integrity. Lauren's family literally had to go and search for answers, just as Brenda's family had to do the same. Both families literally had to be investigators. The scenes were not secured and no evidence was taken to help them. And what's even sadder is, like I said, none of these families got phone calls that their loved one was deceased or that something happened to them. They literally, like I said, had to go down the route of actually caring for their family member. Like Lauren's family went to her apartment when they did not hear from her and had to find a note to say, call this number to find out what had happened to Lauren. Like what? Her close-knit family says they went to the apartment the next day after frantically calling and texting Lauren and were referred to a detective Cronin. They didn't even contact us. They didn't let us know anything. It's like crazy. And I'm asking him what's going on. He said she met some guy on Bumble. And I'm asking him about the guy. He was like, oh, you sound like a really nice guy. Then Brenda's family literally had to find out what male friend's house she went to and what happened to her. Like, they treated her as if she was a Jane Doe. Why our sister was treated like a Jane Doe. Nobody notified us. No, It's, it's almost like they wanted to disappear. It, and for us to disappear. Rawls says her sister, 53-year-old Brenda Lee Rawls, was found dead under what the family describes as mysterious circumstances. And what's sad about Brenda is, like I said, they had to also search and find answers for what happened to Brenda. When they didn't hear from Brenda, they decided to go to the male's home in which he tells them that Brenda had died because she didn't wake up. And law enforcement had left her clothing behind, her shoes, and they didn't understand why law enforcement would leave such things behind. Like, it, a lot of things were dropped in both cases. And as we go back to Lauren's case, there were cups not 
taken. There was a condom that had semen in it. You know, there was blood on the sheet and it just, things weren't just adding up. And law enforcement painted this picture as if it's like this nice guy because he was helping the investigation. And that's fine. That's fine. But if you pr are properly concealing a scene, those items should have went because as we found out, you know, her cause of death was that she had fit, she had a ton of drugs and one article said a cocktail drugs in her system. The cause of death is that she had fentanyl in her system along with other prescriptions and alcohol. And many believe that Lauren was drugged because things were not adding up. And then you have to take on how law enforcement literally did not handle this case with any care. They literally gave the finger to the family. They told the family to stop calling the detective. They provided evidence they collected to crime scene investigators who arrived for the first time that day, included a bloody sheet and a pill. And two cups of like drinks or whatever next to a bottle. They didn't take none of that. We seen a condom, we seen uh, uh, other stuff in there. They didn't take none of this. And so the detective, his name is Detective Cronin. He tells the story of how Lauren met this man on the Bumble app and how Michael told detectives that they were chatting three days before he came over her apartment. She invited him over. They were drinking, having a good time, watching movies. And then at one point she went outside to grab something from her brother. And when she came back in, she went into the bathroom for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, she ended up falling asleep on the couch and he puts her in the bed. And then when he woke up around three o'clock in the morning, Lauren was snoring. But then around six something in the morning, Lauren was not snoring or awake and she had blood coming out of her nostrils in which he called 911. The thing about that story is law enforcement, like I said, did not secure that scene. They did not, in my opinion, even search for evidence because in their minds, they had it that this guy was a nice guy. He was a Caucasian guy. He was a nice guy. He didn't do anything. But let if the roles were reversed. What if a white girl did not wake up from a bumble date with a black man? How would this investigation have been processed? And we can say all day long that Oh, they wouldn't have did such and such. But come on now, you have another woman, Brenda Ross, who also case was not secure, in which the family was not even notified. These women both died on the same exact day. How crazy is that these detectives did not give a rat's ass about these women's lives and about what had transpired. Because regardless or not, you can be judgmental and say, well, she went on a date from Bumble or she went to an unknown male's home who was an acquaintance. There's People will place judgment around those scenarios. Well, she shouldn't have did this. She shouldn't have did that. But she deserved to die by someone? No, she didn't deserve to die. And regardless of... The facts are the facts. There's no reason that Lauren's family was waiting for the detective and the detective was taking too long because he didn't give a shit. And they go into Lauren's apartment and find those items. Why were those items left behind? Because they could have easily checked to see if Lauren was drugged because of the cups that they had, you know, and stuff like that. There should never be that a family member goes into their daughter's or their sister's bathroom and finds a used condom with semen inside of it. And it's not taken just as a precautionary because if Michael did not kill Lauren, you should take this evidence just to be on the safe side. But no, you wanna place it as accidental even though she had these things in her, in her system. Anyone that genuinely cared and they were there, the last person there, and they know that nothing bad happened, you would at least even reach out to the family yourself. Like, listen, exactly. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss of your daughter or your sister. The family's last contact with police was on January 4th at headquarters with their attorney. And Brenda's family 
like Lauren's family, had to deep dive into figuring out what happened to her. Like they had to call around funeral homes and everything. And even when they reached out to poli the police department, the police department didn't even have things that they were supposed to do. They didn't search her apartment. They didn't do anything to make it seem like they cared. And, you know, they wrote letters to the mayor. Like, it should never get to a point where a family has to do all of this to figure out what happened to their loved one. It should never get to this point. It should never get to the point where law enforcement never notifies the next of kin when someone is deceased. Because if Brenda died at this person's home, right? Why isn't it that you didn't look in the system to see if she had any next of kin? And it should never get to the point family is calling funeral homes to figure out where their loved one is when they die. And then you don't even secure the scene. You didn't even check her apartment to see if maybe something had happened to her. We had to figure out everything on our own. No one took the courtesy to inform a relative. And we're not going to stop until we get some type of answers. The family says when they went to the police department looking for answers, they were told nobody could help them. On a bleak Christmas they will never forget, the family says they hope now police will hear what they have to say. Please look into sensitivity training for all your officers. Well, Brenda, there has not been a release of her cause of death. Like I said, they have released something for Lauren and, you know, they have ruled it an accidental death along with, you know, she had fentanyl, other prescription drugs and alcohol in her system. And they are continuing to investigate both cases in the Bridgeport community. And what I did love about is that Brenda's family joined forces with Lauren's family to attend a rally on the, her 24th birthday. I thought that was, you know, really dope. Um, it's truly sad that Lauren lost her life at such a young age because from what I've read and seen TikToks about Lauren, she was a she had like this um thing about her that was a good thing you know like she loved fashion you could tell by her videos you could tell um she was like a really goofy person and that's hurtful very hurtful and i and i'm sending all the love to both families you know regarding these two ladies because no one deserves to find out what has happened to their loved one like that, where you have detectives who don't give a shit, you know, telling you don't be blowing my phone up or this person is a nice guy. If that was my daughter, I don't give a shit what guy it was. I don't care what you are classifying him as. We need to get to the bottom of this because my daughter is dead. And when things don't add up, it's one thing when things add up, but when things do not add up, that I cannot take on because there should never be a reason that black women do not get proper attention when it comes to crime scenes. There should never be that. But these two detectives, as I seen this morning, are being placed on suspension as you know, the police department goes on the investigation to see if these two law enforcement officers actually, you know, did what they were supposed to do or if they did not. And it kind of sucks because they didn't. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Like they pretty much treated these families as if their loved one did not matter. They didn't give any dignity towards these two women regarding, you know, their death. And that speaks volumes on the type of person that you are. And me personally, like regardless of how you feel about somebody, you know, you always have to take, you always have to do a thing where you step outside of your body and put yourself in people's shoes to imagine if that was your daughter or your mom, your aunt, you know? But I really wanted to share that, um, of course, everyone knows about Lauren's case, but, you know, just to briefly go over it and to just state the facts of how these two cases are very similar in the same community. They died on the same day and 
the law enforcement dropped the ball, like dropped the ball. And I did read that um, the guy, Michael's lawyer said that, you know, he has been cooperating with law enforcement on what it is. But my thing is, even if you, you fucked up, admit that. Say that you two were doing whatever. Admit that. Don't leave it so that, that that this family is left to not know what has happened to their child. Because at 37, you shouldn't even be looking at a 23-year-old. And I understand, you know, this is the world that we live in. But you're like 40, going on 40. Mm -hmm. But that is today's case, guys. It's a truly sad one. Two families affected. And... It's just no words that can describe the pain of losing a loved one and having to kind of create your own investigation to figure out what happened to them. No one should have to do that regarding their loved one. As always, I'm sending love and light to both families. I hope that they get the answers that they seek and hopefully one day they can, you know, heal from this. I can't even imagine how, how one would feel. You know what I mean? Like how would one feel? As always, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.